suit you. I never saw the man, officer. He seemed to come out of nowhere. Excuse me, uh, are you the officer investigating the motorcycle accident? Yes, I'm Officer Rockwood. This is Mr. Franks, the driver of the car involved. How's the patient, doctor? Well, the pavement peeled the flesh off one side, and it'll require several skin grafts. He'll have a long convalescence, may have a few scars, but he'll be okay. Thank goodness. He'll be all right. Well, thank you for your cooperation. In the meantime, I'll complete the accident reports. If we need any additional information, we'll call you. Fine. Officer, the uh, Air Force is conducting a special study on motorcycle accidents, and I'd like to ask you a few questions if you have the time. I'll be happy to do anything I can. Good. Uh, let's go to my office, shall we? Thank you, Miss. By the way, uh, I'm Dr. Stewart. May I ask what sort of special study? Well, the Directorate of Aerospace Safety is trying to find the causes of cycle accidents and do something about it. Quite frankly, from what I've seen, it's beyond me why anyone wants to ride a cycle in the first place. As far as I'm concerned, the vehicle just isn't safe. Doctor, I've been riding cycles for 15 years, and I've seen a lot of accidents, too. But in my opinion... Only about one out of a hundred is the fault of the cycle itself. Well, then how do you account for the patient you just brought in? According to what I've been led to believe, you're supposed to have good visibility and maneuverability when riding a cycle. Why didn't he see the car? Why didn't he get out of the way? Have a seat, please. I have a file full of cycle accidents. Every one of these men was highly skilled. Pilots, technicians, mechanics... Apparently, they were very unskilled cyclists. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Those men were trained in their jobs because of skill and experience. Well, but these reports indicate most of these men were experienced riders. But it just isn't enough to be able to ride. You've got to understand and respect what you're riding. Well, then what was needed was training on how to get out of the trouble that caused their accidents. The skill riding isn't getting out of trouble, Doctor. It's learning how to avoid it in the first place. Let me use my own training as an example. Officer Rocky Rockwood is an actual police officer assigned to the motorcycle division of the Los Angeles Police Department. Rocky thought he was a good rider when he joined the force, but he soon found out he had a lot to learn. So you can imagine how he felt being taught basic fundamentals and learning to ride all over again. He didn't feel foolish for long. The purpose became quite obvious. are developing a sensitive feel for the power beneath them. 
practicing coordination between the hands and feet and operating all controls without looking down. One of the necessary coordination exercises is between the left hand clutch and the right hand throttle. The throttle is extremely sensitive. Too much power will throw you off balance. It can cause the rear wheel to spin or the cycle to slip completely out from under you. Not enough throttle and the cycle will jerk. This clanking of the rear chain is known as lugging. A cycle clutch is built to slip at low speeds without damage. In slow traffic, it is necessary to slip the clutch in order to hold power to a steady RPM. If additional power is desired, decrease pressure on the clutch control. For less power, increase pressure on the clutch control. Next, you must coordinate the braking action. Since the bulk of the weight is to the rear, it must become automatic to always apply the rear wheel brake first. This ensures more positive braking action while still retaining steering control. Not too hard or the rear wheel will lock and skid. Then gently apply the front hand brake. You should practice this drill until it becomes automatic. Before attempting to start your engine, be sure your cycle is in neutral. On manual start cycles, improper kicks can result in badly bruised legs. Such injury can be avoided by holding the knee in a locked position. Then with the starter pedal at the top of its arc, throw the full weight of your body straight down and through the pedal until it is disengaged and hold it there until the engine has either started or ceased sound and motion. Of course, this problem is eliminated on cycles equipped with electric starters. Always anticipate any power surge in order to maintain proper balance and posture. Correct posture will eliminate backache and strain on the kidneys, as well as improve your control over the cycle. Distribute the weight of your body between the seat and the footrest. Lean slightly forward with the knees in against the tank. Keep the foot near the brake pedal. As you practice starts and stops, you no longer have to think about what the hands and feet are doing. So you see, doctor, with training of this kind, operating a cycle becomes second nature. You react instinctively, and your mind and vision can concentrate on what's going on around you. There's a lot to it. Yes, there really is. How about a cup of coffee? Fine. <clears throat> it's a common misconception to believe that if you can ride a bicycle, you can automatically operate a motorcycle. I hope you take it blank. Cycle is a wonderful machine. You mentioned earlier two of its greatest advantages, visibility and maneuverability. I'll even add two more, economy and I get a real kick out of riding it. But with each of these advantages, there are certain hazards that every rider must be prepared to face. I'm afraid you've lost me, but go ahead, I'm interested. Well, for example, take a look at me. What do you see? Protection. Protection against some of the hazards inherent in cycle riding. Leather jacket, trousers, boots. A good pair of gloves. Most important of all, a good helmet. We both know that the majority of fatalities are caused by head injuries. And if your helmet doesn't have a face shield, 
And you should wear a good pair of goggles or glasses. So you see, Doctor, each piece of wearing apparel protects me against some form of hazard, such as wind, dust, gravel, debris, and most important, serious head injuries. This applies to passengers as well as it does the actual riders. I think I'm beginning to understand. If you take the proper precautions against these hazards, you can readily enjoy the advantages of riding a cycle. But uh, how does this apply to visibility and maneuverability? Two ways, see and be seen. Combined, they become a technique I call anticipation riding. Officer Rockwood practices anticipation riding at all times. When off duty, he dresses in bright colors to be seen. He is aware of what is going on around him at all times. He checks the traffic behind by using the rear view mirrors and obtains big picture vision in front. Don't restrict your sight to just the traffic lane in which you are riding, but widen your vision to include both sides of the street. You should be able to detect objects within 180 degrees by scanning with your eyes. Active vision also means checking the speedometer frequently. And keep a safe distance between yourself and the motorist ahead. It's important to know the reaction and braking time distances required at various speeds. Develop an ability to judge the distance accurately in traffic. At 25 miles per hour, the distance required is 66 feet. At 45 miles per hour, the distance required is 174 feet. At 65 miles per hour, the distance is 332 feet. Remember, if the speed you are traveling is so excessive that you haven't allowed for reaction time and stopping distance, it could be disastrous. I still carry a pocket-sized card with the various reaction and braking time distances. It's a good habit. I'm beginning to see that skilled cycling is a matter of developing good habits. Now suppose I use your accident reports to show how they could have been prevented, or rather avoided if they'd used anticipation riding. Let's start with intersection fatalities. Here's how Officer Rockwood avoids intersection accidents. Most motorcycle accidents occur at intersections, mainly because the cyclist is not seen, or because the cyclist was traveling too fast to react and stop. As you approach an intersection, look far ahead and well to the left and right. Notice the auto sitting in the left lane facing you. Don't presume he sees you coming, even if you have the right of way. Anticipate the worst. Slow down. Another situation is where oncoming traffic cannot see you because you're behind a motor vehicle. The truck in front of you signals a left turn and is waiting for its turning opportunity. Now it is necessary for you to stop or pass the truck on the right side. But remember, the truck ahead has cut off your view as well as any approaching driver's view. You must anticipate the dangers in this situation. It is far better to take a few seconds more to be safe and seen. Another problem is when you are riding on a through street, maintaining your distance, riding straight ahead.
and using your rear view mirror to check the flow of traffic behind you. The cross streets have stop signs. Be alert. Has he seen you? No. By anticipating this situation, Rocky avoided an accident. If the cyclist had anticipated trouble before entering the intersection and made it a habit to see and be seen, every one of those accidents could have been avoided. And yet intersection accidents account for a large number of cycle accidents. Uh, what about this situation? Where an automobile is traveling in the same direction as the cycle and then suddenly moves directly in front of it. Oh, yes. I've seen that situation many times. Here's how I handle it. Rocky allows enough space between his cycle and the traffic ahead to stop smoothly. Now, he has been placed in a tailgating situation. He immediately reduces his speed gradually, checks the traffic behind, and without panic, regains the proper reaction and braking time distance as soon as possible. Now he has adequate spacing again and can see far enough beyond the driver ahead to size up any dangerous situations that may develop. Another tailgating situation is where an automobile and a cycle are driving in the same lane. The car occupies about three quarters of the lane. When possible, the cyclist should ride in the unoccupied quarter, maintaining the proper distance. If the cyclist follows this procedure, he will be seen in the rear view mirror of the motorist ahead. Now, let's look at it from the motorist point of view when the cyclist does not follow the see and be seen concept. In this case, the cyclist is riding directly in the motorist's blind spot. Never ride where the motorist cannot see you in his rear view mirror. The correct place to be is here. The driver can see you, and you have adequate stopping distance. If you're going to pass, be absolutely sure the motorist knows you're there. He must see you in his rear view mirror. And as you proceed, you should be able to see the face of the motorist in his rear view mirror. Once visual contact has been established with the motorist, you can complete your pass. Now let's talk about curves. Cyclists lose control on curves because of excessive speed, incorrect degree of lean, improper use of brakes, or road surfaces. As speed is increased, centrifugal force pulls the cycle to the outside of the turn. Lean too far, and the cycle can cross the center line directly into the path of oncoming traffic. Not enough, and you can run off the road on the outside. So lean with the curve. Executing a turn is a matter of balance and coordination. The rider and the cycle lean together into a curve. Alert vision will tell you the type of curve and usually a safe speed. Slow down. Do your braking before entering the curve. Keep your speed and degree of lean constant throughout the radius of the turn. Don't be afraid to lean. Cycle tires are built so that the tread extends well up the sides to maintain traction on curves. Tires should be kept in good condition and checked frequently. Tread is not the only thing to consider when it comes to good traction. Always take road surfaces into consideration. Traction or adhesion gives the cycle its flexibility and maneuverability. Wet surfaces, sand, and gravel are extremely dangerous to two-wheel vehicles. Take extra precaution on smooth asphalt. It could be dangerous. Be cautious of oil slicks anywhere vehicles have to stop for prolonged periods of time. 
So, anticipate. Look far ahead so you'll have enough time to react and be prepared for these possible hazards. for sure what lies ahead. When the unavoidable does happen, don't panic. Apply the rear wheel brake, close the throttle, release the clutch, simultaneously apply the front brake, and hit the object head on. Improper braking in this same situation will cause the rear wheel to lock and the cycle may fishtail or broadside. If it does, Turn the front wheel in the direction of travel, lean in the opposite direction, and ride the cycle to a stop. I imagine a man who had no training would panic in a situation like that. Well, that's what generally happens. It takes only a fraction of a second to lose control of any vehicle. But keep in mind that the rider that uses the technique of anticipation riding and makes it a habit to see and be seen rarely finds himself in that position. Well, I hope you don't mind my asking this question, but does it really work in heavy traffic? Just how can you keep space around you when people keep cutting in and out? I know. You think it only works in light traffic, not on crowded highways or freeways. Well, I appeared in a film once for that very reason. Now, let's hear Officer Rockwood's exact thoughts as he proceeds through traffic. Coming on to general freeway traffic now in the peak traffic condition time. Very dangerous time to be on the freeway. The end of a day. Heavy freeway driving using extreme caution due to the fact that any quick movements by a motorcycle or by another vehicle can become extremely dangerous. And everything seems to be pretty well under control right now for the lanes I'm riding in. At all times, I keep looking to the right, to the left, and well ahead of me rather than just at the car directly in front of me. Overtaking some of these slower vehicles the car ahead plenty of distance just in case he does change his mind decide to stop or make a quick lane change and remember that many people do not give any kind of a signal prior to making a lane change the maneuverability of a motorcycle does afford you to move through the traffic a little bit better than normal this car is on my left floating over just a little bit now I'm going to move over. I uh, try to ride in one side of the lane or the other rather than on the dead center so I can look down between the lanes and see what's going on around me. Try and go down between the lanes. And again, using extreme caution, giving the car on the right, the same lane that I'm in, a little bit of movement, and also trying to see if I can see him in his review mirror, if he can see me, then I can see him and vice versa. Traffic now starting to move better. And again now, by traveling close to the white line that marks off one lane or another, I do not have to make any sharp direct movements either to the right or to the left. I can float rather easily from one lane to another. cycle is safe. It appears to be a matter of training the rider. Right. A man should learn the fundamentals of riding, develop his coordination, and know his cycle before trying to ride in traffic. He can enjoy the advantages of cycling by understanding the hazards, by taking precautions against them. And he does this by dressing properly, having alert vision, and not tailgating. 
I can see that he must develop the technique of anticipation writing. And his cardinal rule must be see and be seen. Doctor, I believe you've got the message. The question is, did you?